Man, making products is the most exciting part about starting a brand. It's the time where your vision finally meets reality and you can create a product that you could touch, feel, and even wear. In our previous video, we shared ways that you could scale up your clothing brand, starting with DTG and expanding with screen printing in a profitable way. In this video, we're gonna be diving into the details that you guys need to know of mistakes that entrepreneurs normally make when it comes to starting, launching, and printing a brand. So if you guys are a new visitor to this channel, make sure that you guys hit that subscribe button located right down below and turn on those post notification bells to be alerted of future video drops. On this channel, our mission is to bring clarity to business and help entrepreneurs build brands that impact the world from the ground up. Check it out. Before you make anything, you have to put your best foot forward on the preparation before reaching out to a shop such as a live print shop, which will be taking care of you with a special promotion if you decide to do business with them. But more on that later. Putting your best foot forward means understanding what your brand is about and who your customer is. When you start with that, you'll have a better understanding about which kind of designs you're going to be creating and which type of blanks you might use. Now, This is the reason why print shops at a lot of different locations will have a showroom such as this. They lay out a bunch of different colors, styles, fabrics, uh, feels to the apparel that you might be using, and more importantly, all of them vary in price ranges. Not every blank t-shirt is the same price. Some of them might be as cheap as a dollar, which those dollar promotional tees will be as good as, uh, you know, after you're done using them for the first time, you end up using them as a shop rag, clean your rims and the bottom of your sneakers. And the other higher price point wholesale t-shirts can range up to $10, depending on the types of cuts, the uh, dyes, and the types of cotton that is used. And those t-shirts, you know, when you wear them, you feel like a king, you feel really good, you feel like, like a million bucks. And then when somebody throws in the dollar shop rag into the wash with your $10 tee, you get pissed off. And the difference between choosing a blank is gonna depend on who your customer is and what they're willing to pay. Now, if your customer you know is not gonna pay over $10 for your designs or for that promotional tee, then you have to go with a lower price point blank in order to have some profitability in that margin and make your printing work. But if you know that your customers are willing to pay $30, $40 for a t-shirt, then that's when you know you can invest into some more. Now, once you guys have an understanding of which blank you're gonna use and which garment you're gonna select, the next part in this process is having the right artwork, guys. Don't come to a shop making these mistakes that we're about to discuss. All right, so let's head on over to the graphic artist who's the one that takes care of a lot of different brands here and he'll be able to share the pros and cons of what you should be doing and help you guys better select your artist and the files that you'll need. Reggie, what up, bro? Yo, what's going on, man? Hey, man, so uh, when was the last time somebody sent you uh, clip art from Microsoft Paint? <laughs> Yesterday? Probably last week. <laughs> I got a, uh, a PowerPoint PDF. That was hilarious. <laughs> because yeah. you said you needed a PDF, right? <laughs> right. So they saved it out as a PDF, but it was like probably two inches by two inches. It's pretty pretty small. So what's the what's, what, what type of files do you guys normally like here? Uh, the bigger, the better. Uh -huh. So you're going to need like EPS. AI, PSD, anything that's editable, like the original file. The original it, file, not the Microsoft Word yeah, file. Yeah, not right. the Microsoft Word, not the JPEG that's been flattened. Right. The original file, because that makes it easier for us to get through those layers. Mm. If we're gonna change colors, if we're gonna size up and down, all that matters because the more you size with pixels, the more visible the pixels are. Mm. Um, that comes into an issue when you're trying to do production and actually really get those clean, crisp lines for your final product. I had sent you an email too. Um, can you pull up that file? Oh. Okay. Not every computer has the same fonts and a lot of people have branded fonts that they use for everything. Two ways to get past that. If you send us the file, you can send us the TTF the font, the, the font form, mm -hmm. format so that I can download it and manipulate it. Um, vector is great. The only concern I would have is with the very small letters. Mm -hmm. We are dealing with embroidery. Right. So the yarn can only give you so much detail. It's mm -hmm. not the same as something being digital. After you adjust the art, you end up sending it to a digitizer or do you guys do digitizing in-house or? We actually send it to a digitizer. It's, to a digitizer. it's a lot quicker. It is, right? Because they yeah. know what they're doing. Exactly, yeah. they know yeah. what they're doing. We know it's gonna be good. Mm -hmm. um, it saves us time. Mm -hmm. um, because digitizing is a stitch by stitch method. If yep. you see the digitized artwork, it has each line. Mm -hmm. yep. Of where, the, like of where DST, the path is gonna go. Where right? the path yeah. is gonna go and it tells the printers to do exactly what they need to do. 
so our ladies can set it up, line it up, Just keep production on it, yeah. flowing. Yeah. Send that to the digitizer, and in the meantime, we're gonna go and head over to the screen room. So as we're waiting for those files to get digitized, I wanna take you guys into the dark room where the designs that you create come to life. Can you guys see me right now? We're in the system that's taking your design from the computer and burning it onto a screen. With this screen, you are now able to create the designs that you envision and put it onto garments such as t-shirts, bags, and any other product you can think of. Can you guys see me now? <laughs> yeah, that's right, guys. This system right here takes your idea and makes it into a reality. Inside of this room, we have a screen room. This is where all the jobs that are gonna be pending are organized, are then burned in there. And as you guys can see, a live print shop does a lot of different jobs and they got a lot of different orders coming in and they have to organize their system accordingly. Once that screen is created, it gets taken and pressure washed right here. Through the pressure washing, it, it brings it to life. So once it is pressure washed, guys, you have your finished screens that are ready. And if you guys can notice right here, there's four for a design. This is because in screen printing, you have to lay down the, the ink for each of the part of the shirt, which is why there's minimum order quantities when it comes to printing like this. So come check this out. They'll set them right here on the side, organized by job, and this is where the fun starts. Once the screen is ready, it goes into the screen printer here, which is an auto and able to handle large demand. As you can see, for a full color design, multiple screens are needed in one machine. Each color is being pressed in the sequence that is required, and by the end of it, they have to unload those screens and physically put the next design in. Once the orders are completed, they are put through the dryer. Over here, they bag them up with an automatic bagging machine, and they are shipped in bulk to your door. You see, this is why there is a minimum order quantity for screen printing. You have to see it to fully understand that your one design with multiple colors is taken over an entire factory floor that has monthly overhead, employee costs, facility, and much more. There's a lot of labor and love that goes into the making of these products. As you guys can see, the entire production floor is dedicated to your designs when it's being made. This is the reason why screen printing has a high minimum order quantity. It's why direct-to-garment printing only has one at a time. It's just one machine printing all the colors. Here, screen printing is doing everything from the ink to the design to the to the bagging, to the heating, to the drying. There's a lot of factors that go into creating your brand. And the beauty about a live print shop is that they have minimum order quantities of just 36 units. And if you're watching this video, they're giving everyone free neck labeling that is normally an upcharge. It's all gonna be included for free. As long as you mention from the ground up as you guys are checking out and speaking to the sales rep. Or you guys can also use the links included right down below to get your ordering process started. And if you haven't seen the video where we discuss how to leverage print on demand with screen printing, we're gonna be linking that video right up above. I highly encourage you guys to check that out as we share a strategy to help you scale profitably into screen printing. Bro. Hey, Mr. John. Man. What's up, man? Your production back there is crazy. It's coming together, man. Yeah, but it didn't, it didn't start like this, did it? No, man, in uh, my parents' garage with a squeegee pulling a screen and then um, <laughs> after 13 years and hiring amazing people and building a team, it's coming to this. Bro, no, this is this is fire, man. And, and, yeah. and upstairs, you guys got the uh, you guys got the five talent you're working yeah, on? Yeah, all of our designers brand? work upstairs. This is okay. kind of our cool design area, and then we have all of our uh, new five talent product upstairs. That's what's up, man. And then what would you say is the most like fruitful moment of opening up this location? Oh man, the best part was bringing embroidery in-house. Okay. So at first we used to outsource embroidery for the last five or six years, and then we had an interesting opportunity to buy equipment, hire personnel that knows how to do it. They're, I mean, right. they're amazing at it. And now it's all in-house from screen printing, embroidery, um, and now we're finally ready to launch our own brand. This is this is fire, bro. So tell me a little bit about what's, what's going on right here. Yeah, Five Talent, the whole idea this is the about- I love this shirt. <laughs> no, this is, I mean, I've got the same one in a different color. It feels so awesome. good. That, that was kind of my mission is to, you know, to buy a shirt that you want to wear two days in a row, you know? Mm. But um, the goal is just to kind of inspire people to go out, do their best in everything they're doing. And hopefully, you know, when you wear a shirt, you feel good, mm -hmm. you have a better day. Most definitely. You know, most you, definitely. you put the you shirt on, you know, you're, you're pulling you the armpits. Nice. Like, yeah, you're like, you're stretching, you feel light. You, ruin, feel, you yeah. feel ready to go. If you got the wrong shirt on, it'll ruin your whole day. <laughs> yeah, it will, man. It will, it will ruin your... Itchy neck. Yeah. <laughs> so that's why the, the fit, the feel feels great. I, mm -hmm. I sent uh, one of the first shirts out uh, to one of our influencers and he's like, I think this might be my favorite shirt. And I'm like, that's okay, awesome. we're on track. That's what we're trying to do. Man, so you guys, you guys have experience experience printing for a lot of different brands. What, what would you say is one of the things that has differentiated the ones that were super successful that you continue to do business with? You know, I think being organized. 
I think it's all about uh, the customers I see. I mean, I've seen co uh, people come in that have amazing designs and maybe it was a, a one run and that was mm -hmm. it. But I've seen other people that instead of treating it like we're gonna put out a t-shirt, they're treating it like we're gonna build a business. Mm -hmm. We're gonna be organized. We're gonna think about our spring collection, our summer collection, we're planning things out because um, you know, during convention season, we can rush things through. We can do rush orders, but if you're gonna make a quality product, it takes a little bit of time mm -hmm. picking out. And so I would say, you know, being organized, planning your schedule out, hey, you don't need sweatshirts in Vegas summer. You know, just little things like that. When your product shows up, how it shows up, choosing the right items. And then uh, from a customer's point of view, I always say, hey, start thinking about your retail price right when you're making shirts. Mm -hmm. Don't focus so much on the product that you're not thinking about the sell through. Mm -hmm. It's about selling. Mm -hmm. If not, you, you, it's just an expensive hobby. You know, mm -hmm. you're just gonna yep. have more boxes in your garage of t-shirts. Focus on the selling, focus on building your brand, marketing it, and then let us print the product. Mm -hmm. Let us build yep. it uh, because those are two separate separate things. Mm -hmm. And so if you focus on getting your brand out there, it's going to sell through. Exactly. But if you focus so much on building a shirt and not selling, it's not going to sell. Not gonna sell. Yeah, it's that, it's sell. that simple. So tell us a little bit about the transition from your first location. I know it was like a couple hundred square feet, mm -hmm. right? To your to your second location and this is your third, right? Yeah, this is our, our third location. I mean, the first location was the garage, one roll up door, a few hundred square feet. Um, second location was on Sahara. We had um, about 1500 square feet. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, it was kind of so bad, like we didn't have a wall between our, our desk and our washout room. Mm -hmm. So, you know, when someone's <laughs> pressure washing screen, hold up, hold, give me a second. I gotta answer this phone call. And then, I mean, it was just, oh, it was funny. a mess, but we just kept showing up and doing it and finally built a little room. And, you know, our, our first dark, dark room was like a bathroom. Mm -hmm. So you go in the dark room, there's a toilet in the corner and the screens are all <laughs> stacked up. And, but we had an auto press there, which really took, you know, production mm -hmm. to the next level instead of pulling a squeegee. And we just did that for, for five or six years. Oh, wow. And then we found a unique opportunity uh, on the Northwest side of Vegas. There was this whole complex that was pretty much, you know, dead. There wasn't any renters in there. And we came in and actually decided to start purchasing our first building, which was a huge mm -hmm. step, but the rent payment wasn't very, you know, wasn't much. We just had to come up with money down and finish build outs. Mm -hmm. And we did a whole build out. And then we went to 3,400 square feet. Oh, wow. We had offices, we had a door between mm -hmm. our washout rooms. So we didn't have to hear the pressure washer. <laughs> and after being there a few years, you know, we finally got a second auto. So now we could run, you know, twice as much. Um, and then we ran that until um, 2020. And we finally oh, wow. made this move, um, you know, mid 2020 and moved here. And actually, you know, with everything going sideways, mm -hmm. it actually was probably the best worst year that we ever had because mm -hmm. we scaled up from two presses to four. We brought in a whole embroidery department. We went mm -hmm. from 11 to 25 employees. And I just knew when everything being messed up, there's opportunity here. Mm -hmm. Like there's awesome. gotta be opportunity. And we know once things open up, they're coming back. Mm -hmm. And once yep. they come, they're, they're just gonna explode. During this, these shutdowns, right? There was a lot of shops closing, a mm -hmm. lot of businesses going out of business. And again, you saw an opportunity there. You were like, yo, are you selling this equipment? Big companies out mm -hmm. there that they were, they were big giant machines, you know, and they had to run so much work to stay open and to have, you know, 150 employees and all this kind of stuff. And then there was an opportunity with a few shops closing and, you know, we ended up picking up about half a million dollars worth of equipment for about a hundred thousand, uh -huh. which was scary. Yeah, it's yeah, scary yeah. To, to make mm -hmm. that kind of investment yep. when everything's shut down. Mm -hmm. But I just, I know it's coming back. You know, right. I have faith. I, I, I see that people are still ordering. Mm -hmm. I see that, you know, people are, are ready to get back out there. Schools yep. are coming back. And I just wanted to, you know, go all in and put myself in a position where I could handle it well, when definitely. it comes back because it's gonna be big. I remember hearing about a live like for years throughout the community like a lot of my friends printed there like mm -hmm. I always knew about you guys so being in here was awesome first of all um, and the second part was that you were you were also doing brands like you were you're starting up your own brand right so there was a there was some clothing brand that you had started in the mix of all that and then yeah and then things like everybody's first business they don't always go right if, you, if you're gonna run a print shop you have to master the print mm -hmm. you know how to do it how to get orders in and out of time trying to do that and run a brand and trying to run a retail front it was just too much mm -hmm. it was too much for us and you know we would you're, you know eventually you start doing everything 50 percent mm -hmm. and halfway and then it's not that great and so um, we originally started this to build our own brand mm -hmm. and then we just saw that the need of you know you know what if we go out and service people that are also looking for what we do um, that will that, that's gonna be the best way for us to make you know make revenue mm -hmm. and grow and we just decided to commit to that and did that for the last 13 years right so mm -hmm. now we've got 25 employees we have printing embroidery design packaging fulfillment all these different mm -hmm. departments and it kind of was like you know what I think it's time for us to do our own thing like yep. we, we can do it all yep. let's take let's finally branch out and put ourselves out there mm -hmm. and go after something we believe in for everybody that's still watching this video right now what he just mentioned and what he just wanted to highlight is that it really does take faith for you to stand out, to step out and, and pursue the thing that you guys want to pursue. 
because things aren't going to come to you just because you have an idea and you want to make things happen. It's not until you start taking action that you start to bring clarity to what that vision may be. And then you make some adjustments, right? Along the way, you have clarity about what you're thinking you're wanting to do. And then as you fail at them, you're like, yo, you know what? I have a little bit more clarity. Let me make some improvements with my business like he did. He did, uh, he invested into equipment. He went all in. And just like you guys, if you guys are going to be starting up a clothing brand, there's a, lot of, there's a lot of issues that are going to happen in production. There's a lot of issues that are going to happen in the launch of it. Um, but there's things that you could do to essentially prevent a lot of those issues from happening. And that's by working with a quality print shop, like a live print shop, they'll be able to service your designs, right? They'll be able to make sure that you have your artwork correctly. The first time be able to recommend things that you're going to need to get the best quality product out there. And that's a, that's, that's something that a lot of print shops don't do. Sometimes they'll just take your order. They'll be like, all right, so this is what you want. All right, let me, let me slap your thing on there. The fast this, food print shop. This is what you get. get it and then, and then you get the shirt and you're like, what? This is not what I thought it was. And then they say, you sent us the artwork. That's how it's going to come out. Right? So there's little, little issues that a lot of times people don't address. There is, I mean, that is one way to do business, uh -huh. but that's not a way to build a long-term, you know, customer base and, and things mm -hmm. like that. And I mean, even with us getting together and doing five talent, mm -hmm. it's kind of brought us back to what it feels like to be the customer. Mm -hmm. I mean, we run production and all this stuff and we, we, we kind of got that figured out, mm -hmm. but now we're launching this, it's, it's back in. I'm like, Oh, this is hard. You know, like mm -hmm. we're, we're used to working with so many other customers designs. So to make it from ourselves and what, you know, envisioning it and making sure it looks like that mm -hmm. in the final product. Um, that's one thing I love about doing this new project is it, I, it want, I want to put ourselves in the customer's shoes mm -hmm. because I want to know, okay, did it come from what I thought it looked like to what it kind of finally looks like mm -hmm. in the final product. And mm -hmm. if we did our job right, our goal is to bring the design alive. Man, such a powerful interview that I hope you guys really enjoyed and we're able to better see how important it is to have a vision for what you're trying to do. That way it continues to motivate you every single day that you get up and work on it. And we hope that this video helped paint some insight about how you could better position your brand. Now, the reason that we're covering a live print shop and the reason that they're doing a promo of free neck labeling for every orders is because we've seen them do business over the years and they've honestly have grown from a small setup to a smaller setup to now this bigger setup. And we know they're gonna to continue to grow as their customer service and the patience of working with new brands is really what makes them stand apart. So if you guys enjoyed this video, I highly encourage that you guys reach out to them and mention from the ground up as they're giving away free neck labeling, free neck labeling with every order of screen print that you do. The best part about it is that their minimum order quantities are just 36 units for a full color design. Regardless of whether you want to do one color or eight color, it's all the same price. And that's really what's cool about what they do is they want to help you succeed by you not having to worry about your profit margins and costs. You know exactly what it is going to be out the door before you even get started. And you know what you could sell your products for based on the vision that you have. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And if you haven't seen the first video that we launched with them, I highly encourage you to check that out right now as we talk about a direct to garment to screen printing strategy that'll help you grow profitably and scale it up without much money out of your pocket. So we'll see you guys in the next video on our channel.